Hello my gamers, I'm back once again with a review of the Cooler Master MM710. Let us dig in. So straight up I have been looking forward to this mouse. The shape looked pretty nice and it's also a very light one at just 53 grams. It's an ambidextrous shape which is 160mm long, 62mm wide and 38mm tall. To start off the shape isn't great for my palm grip. I find the hump in this one pushes into the top of my palm a bit too much making it a bit uncomfortable for me to use. I'd say if you were a squeezer this might be one to avoid as it seems slightly better suited to lighter holders, claw grippers and finger tippers. Now when I plugged this in to give it a go I was instantly disappointed. The mouse 1 and 2 buttons are incredibly mushy. Coupled with that, there's an insane amount of post travel when you actually trigger the Omron switches. This has made the mouse incredibly difficult and uncomfortable to use. It's like pushing down rubber. It causes a lot more stress on my hand and funny enough, despite Caller Master saying that there's going to be less fatigue, there's actually a lot more. I can only use it for about an hour before I start getting some incredibly noticeable discomfort in my hand and my wrist and just have to stop using it. But that's not all. Coupled with these awful buttons, the shell also creaks quite a bit when squeezing it. This mouse is similar to a bed that you'd get at a sleazy hotel. It moves all the time, keeps making noises, but the only thing that's missing is the smell. The side buttons are a bit better, but it's the first mouse that I have used when pressing the side buttons and using the left click, it actually rubs against your thumb a bit. The remaining buttons, being the DPI button and the scroll wheels, are the only shining light of this mouse, which goes to show just how disappointing it is. The scroll wheel notches are very solid, and it's still very easy to scroll through. The switch itself is also superb. It does receive my scroll wheel feels real seal of approval, so I guess this mouse hasn't completely shut the bed. The shell is a matte black, it also comes in glossy and white variants. It's nice, and the holes are designed after the Cooler Master logo. That's that's cute. The holes are also not featured on the sides where your finger and thumb will rest. And actually I will mention this as when I look over these honeycomb mice it can annoy me sometimes. The holes are symmetrical across the whole mouse. Some keep the symmetry but side buttons or the DPI toggles at the bottom of the mouse can ruin that. But this one is symmetrical across the whole mouse. I'm really clutching to find positives here. In fact, it's a nice one to look at, just plain black and standard looking. Simplicity is best here, so well done Caller Master. There's even no RGB, it's lovely, it reminds me of pure black footballer boots for some reason. No fuss, just classic old school footy with the boys cocks out kind of thing. It's also apparently dust and splash resistant, but this time they don't provide an IP rating like they did with the 720. So despite how much I'm desperate to drown this mouse, I'm not going to. The cable is also pretty nice. It's light and flexible also. Once again, they mentioned not needing a bungee, but you will need one. And the feet are PTFE. These are nicer than the 720 that I reviewed where there was gaps for dust to get trapped into. They are fast and smooth on my end game gear that I managed to finally flatten with an iron and on my Extrify GP4 that I also use there's the same smoothness but a lot more control. Software wise is acceptable. I guess in comparison to others that provide software, Cooler Masters 1 has probably been the easiest to use. Everything you need in terms of changes are on the first two pages, so it's quite efficient. You can do all the usual stuff, change DPI profiles, angle snapping, lift off distance adjustments and so on. In game performance, when I've been able to use it for around an hour at most before my hand screams at me begging me to use something else, it's been okay. But ultimately comfort is a number one priority for me in a mouse, so I guess in game it's actually awful. The mouse is using a PMW 3389 but as mentioned the discomfort is just too distracting for me to really give an opinion here. I have looked around online and it seems like I'm not the only one with issues with this model. Many others seem to have issues with the quality of the mouse just being substandard and honestly it's really disappointing. This mouse could have been really good. It reminds me of the Razer Viper that had also shat itself and just let itself down with poor quality. It should be excellent. The shape can be nice for some. The holes are everywhere you want them to be. It's light, the feet are also good and they can cover a good amount of the underside as well, but it's just let itself down and it really does look like I'm not the only one that has had problems. Unfortunately, I can't recommend this mouse. Sad, I know. I was expecting a lot more from Cooler Master. They're not a small startup brand, but have been in the game for a long time, so having this kind of quality is just not acceptable. But the pricing is quite cheap at the moment. It's around 40 euros, dollars and pounds. Honestly, when I looked at the prices, it all came around 40 on almost every currency, apart from yen. 
So it's not a bad price. If you've got nothing to lose, it might be worth a gamble on it because if yours is structurally sound, I'm sure it'll be a good mouse if you also have a lighter grip. So that's all for this review. Soon, I should have the ROG Keris wireless and I finally got hold of the Endgame Gear XM1R. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell and icon. Shout out to my Patreons for taking a portion of the financial loss from this poorly planned business venture. Goodbye.